y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the spirit and the truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. Let's look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8, uh, verses 39, you, 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 39 uh, through 43, I believe it was, that we had ran into our hearings. We hear uh, uh, an exchange of, of dialogue. And uh, I want to, to tell you that the verse that I, that I really launched this sermon from uh, really proceeds from uh, chapter uh, verse number 43. In that verse, Christ says something uh, that to me is uh, more powerful and explains the context of the chapter in and of itself. Uh, we have the great writings of John, in which he wrote in John 12 that, that sometimes folk cannot hear because well did Isaiah the prophet prophesize that he had hardened their hearts and stopped their ears lest they should hear and be converted. Here in chapter 8 we find that he makes an annunciation of the most powerful proclamation. Where he declares in John 8 and 32 that I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 8 he makes another declaratory statement. He says that the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. He speaks of his eternity. He speaks of his wisdom and his power. He speaks of his majesty. In verse 58, he declares, he speaks of his lineage that reaches beyond Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In verse 58, he says that before Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was, I am. God speaks, and he says that I'm God all by myself. For whatever reason, people hear these wonderful words of God and find themselves sitting and looking almost like one is talking to some mute and dumb or not able to receive or perceive the words of God. It is like preaching to a church that when you say God is good, they just look at you mm -hmm. like you're speaking some kind of foreign language. And every now and again, when you're speaking to somebody and say something about God and who he is, somebody ought to shout amen. 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 Every now and again, when somebody says that God is a healing safe and has more power in the hem of his garment than all the doctors of the land, somebody ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Every now and again, when somebody is preaching and he says that God uh, will stay with you even in the midnight hours, for he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, somebody in here ought to not be so sanctified that they ought to hear that and say, thank you, Jesus, because every now and again, you needed God when everybody else had left you. Right. Now he's sitting there, he's looking at these people, it reminds me. I was out eating one time, and I went had a friend who came here from Texas, a friend that I ordained to preach the gospel named Kevin Dansby, and we went over, uh, over the, the uh, border, and we sat down at a restaurant, and the restaurant menu uh, was in Spanish. And since my Spanish is uh, not as good as I'd like it, uh, I looked at the menu, and I tried to find something that looked like hamburger that may sound like it was going to be a hamburger, but I couldn't make it out. And the man kept looking at me and saying, uh, I guess he was asking, what will I have? And I looked down at the menu again and blinked my eyes, and I said, maybe I'll find something that looked like pizza in Spanish, but nothing looked like it meant pizza. And I didn't want to order something, didn't know what I was ordering. Y'all say with me. And I, and I, we were trying to communicate, but it looked like we were having a language barrier problem. And, and I even found that taco was not taco in Tijuana. Uh, I, I thought for sure I'd see taco when I would just order tacos all through to give me tacos. Uh, but they, they had it all in Spanish and we couldn't communicate. And finally, I saw a picture that looked like a taco. And I said, I'll have one of these, por favor. Uh, amen. I, think I knew that did you, huh? <laughs> One of these puff of all, see, we, we, we had tacos and had a good time.
time and, and I thought to myself, how is it then that when we, we look at the church today and we look at how it is that we have been preaching to you since 2009, deacons and preachers and visiting preachers over and over and over again, yet verse 43 still has its relevance today. If you look at verse number 43, he says, why is it that you cannot understand my speech? Well, one of the things could have been that they uh, uh, simply were babes in Christ. You remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, so he said that strong meat belongs to them who are of age, but, uh, but, but milk belongs to babes in Christ. Well, it could have been that they were dull of hearing, but, but I suggest something else. I believe that the Spirit speaking to the Spirit. I believe that when the preacher is preaching, that one of the things that stop the understanding of the preaching is the Spirit that's working in the people. This house not quiet because folk got the spirit of God. This house quiet because some spirit working in the people of God. Amen. 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 And I know what Jesus meant when he said, why is it that I'm preaching? That I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and folk are still looking at me like I'm crazy. Why is it that I preach and proclaim that I am the son of God, the only begotten son of God, yet folk still don't believe me? <clears throat> well, it's because spirit speaketh spiritual things. Faith speaketh faithful things. And when folk don't speak your language, and let me lunch here just for a minute, why don't we speak the same languages? When we don't speak the same languages, we often are not able to communicate to get the thing that we want. Try and try if I will. But what I wanted from that menu probably was there. But the fact we didn't speak the same language prohibited me from getting the stuff that I want. Why are you telling me that, preacher? When you don't speak in faith to God, God don't understand what you're talking about. All right. Come on. Y'all say amen. Come on now. When, 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 your, when your worship is not in faith to God, God don't understand. You can't communicate with God. Amen. When you're sitting here right now, you know you know you got some stuff going on in your life. And you're trying to talk to God in your spirit, and you're trying to pray to God, and you're sitting there too cool to say thank you, Jesus, and too sweet to say, too suave to say, have mercy on my soul. God don't speak hip hop. Come on now. Amen. That's how he put it. God don't speak country western. He don't speak child. God speak faith. Amen. And, and how do you know? Well, I've been preaching since 2009, and I preach to you that there are blessings and tidings. But some of you are still tipping. I've been preaching to you that we ought to be entrepreneurs, but some of us are still wanting to be employees. I've been preaching to you that we ought to have a social conscience in life, that we ought to care what goes on in our community, what goes around in this great nation. And some of us are still socializing with the devil. When we use faith as a mean of communication, faith can reach past all obstacles and all barriers. Faith can make you rise up and say some stuff you thought you might not able be able to do. You remember that Peter, when he was asked if he knew that Jesus was the Son of God, he said in Matthew chapter 20, John 27, he said, I know not the man. He was asked not one time, not two times, but three times. And he spoke out of faith and said, I don't know him. Why? Because fear paralyzed his faith. But when he got up one Sunday morning, he was standing on the day of Pentecost and saw the power of God working through that day and saw it fall down as clothing fires upon and set upon each and every one of them. In other words, when he came in contact with the Spirit, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, then Peter stood up and began to speak in faith. Right. What do we need today? We need some folk that's got the right spirit that will shout when it's time to shout in faith to what God has done and meant to them. Right. I don't care how quiet you devils get, Amen. I'm going to keep preaching that a good spirit will talk back to God when they hear God's word. Amen. You ought to be able to say thank you, Jesus, yes. because God has made a way out of nowhere. And you ought to be able to speak in faith to Amen. a good God. Amen. Faith then, Jesus tried to teach faith talk. What do you mean faith talk? You remember in Matthew 17 and verse number 20, he said, if you have the faith, of a muscle seat. Uh huh. You can speak to this mountain and say, Get ye under hence, and it shall be moved. The problem is, uh, we don't have enough folk uh, who speak in faith. Some of us are talking to our mountain saying, If you could move Mr. Mountain. 
Some of us are talking to our mountain and saying, can I be on your side, Mr. Mountain? We need Christians that will look at your problems and your circumstances and speak a word in due season to your problems and tell them who God is to you on every chance you get and tell a mountain, get out of my way. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The father of lies. But you have to have faith in God. I'm saying, 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 I
Uh, is to sit down and say that the, oh, the whole world is against you? Well, the, are you sure the whole world is against you? Could some people be against you? Aren't there some people that's for you? Let's talk about the folk that are for you. Why? Amen. Because we're trying to get good kinetic energy and good cognition for you to not focus on what you don't have and to focus on what you do have. Amen. And if you talk better to yourself, you'll think better about yourself. Right. But if you sit here right now thinking that somebody's going to look at me, I'm going to be against the clan if I say amen. You're going to miss a chance to get your praise on. Yeah, You're going to miss yeah. a chance to get your blessing. You're going to leave out here just like you came in, wounded, battered, and blooded, and bleeding spiritually. Right uh -huh. now, you got a chance to say yes, Lord. You got a chance to say help, Lord. You got a chance to say thank you, Lord. You got a chance to say mercy, Lord. You got a chance to say peace, Lord. You want to open your mouth and shout yeah. something in the house of God. Yeah. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but a perverseness therein is the branch of the spirit. Proverbs 15 and verse number 4. When we look a little further, we find that the scriptures teach there is that that speaketh like the piercing words, but the tongue is wise is unto our health. Proverbs 12 and verse number 18. Now listen to this because it's important my argument. That whatever you're going through, you like to provoke it in your life. You remember Luke 6, verse number 45. A good man speaking good things out the treasure court. You find somebody always talking negative, always talking down, always talking miserable, always talking, talking rash and harshly, like God not able to fix their problems. The bad stuff gonna come into their life every time. Uh -huh. It's not gonna come into their life because the devil's powerful. It's not coming into life because things just happen. It comes into your life because you spoke it into your life. Amen. You need to watch Amen. what you say and how you say and who you're talking about. Uh -huh. You better not speak a word against the Lord. Uh -huh. If you say the the Lord can't help him, the Lord not going to help you because you just told him not to help him or right about it. But when you start talking about God, you need to say God can do anything but fail. Amen. You can't look at you and say, why you keep doing what you're doing? Because God is able. Am I right about it? God is able. God will. He has. He can. If you speak like a child of God, if you speak faith, powerful things will happen in your life. But if you shut your mouth, the Bible says even the rocks will cry out to his glory. Amen. And it's a shame to be in a house full of Christians and the rocks got to praise God because people of God won't praise him. Why is the church quiet? Well, because we're not speaking the same language. When I talk about doing some things that are unseeable, it seems far and strange or just some preacher stuff. When I start telling you that God can give you back that which is dead, the word can quicken that which is dead, the word is able to bring the light that which is dead. I'm in a dead relationship. You need to speak life into your relationship. Amen. I'm dead financially. You need to speak life into your financial Amen. situation. And I'm not talking about going by saying, loan me some money. That ain't speaking life into your situation. Amen. That's just making you more dead and deep in debt. Am I right about it? And every time you get a payday loan, the debt get deeper. Am I right about it? And every time you go to the pawn shop, the debt get deeper. And every time you try something different than what God said, the debt get deeper. But if you speak wealth into your life, if you speak entrepreneurship into your life, God has to do it because God has put the power in what you say. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all believe that? Can you raise your hand? How many of y'all believe that? Amen. How many y'all believe that? Amen. You ought to talk good and not evil about your church. Amen. You ought to talk good and not evil about people. Because the same stuff you talk about somebody else will turn around and hit you right in the face. Am I right about it? You ought to speak well but not broke. Don't you ever tell nobody you broke. Don't you know if you got $2 in Jesus, you a two-time millionaire. Am I right about it? You ought not talk, but you ever talk broke. As long as you got God, you got all that you need. Y'all ought to say amen. You ought to talk here. Don't you say, I feel bad. You just need to say, I'm, feel, I'm feeling that 90% today. I feel pretty good today. I don't care what you're feeling. You need to speak help. You ought to speak, I'm well today. I want you to do something right now. I want you to speak something with your mouth. And we ought to be able to hear it up here. But I'm, now, you've got to be alive to receive this and get this. I know you understand what I'm saying because I'm trying to talk to you. And I'm like, Jesus, why is it you can't understand what I'm speaking? Uh -huh. The reason you can't understand it requires a faith translator. It requires a faithful spirit. It requires a faith in your heart. It requires faith in God. It requires a life full of faith. Amen. And that faithful folk can't do this. 
I want you to stop just for a minute and just look at your neighbor. I want you to speak something into your life right now. I want you to, especially if your neighbor ain't been praising God. I want you to speak something to that, speak something to your life right now. By the power of God, don't you cover your mouth up. You need to speak with faith. What you cover your mouth up? Huh? Put your hand down. Look at, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I speak well. Whatever you want, but speak something in your life. And we want to hear it up here. Listen to the scriptures. When we come to a close of this lesson, we'll find that there are many of us, like these people in the text, who were talking to, and I want you to get this, they were talking to the Son of God. And Isaiah, he is called Emmanuel, God with us. He says, unto us a child is born, a child is given. And there he preached that the government shall rest on his shoulder. In Isaiah 66, he is aware of a new name given by God. It is this God that we call Jehovah Jireh, mm -hmm. my provider. Mm -hmm. Jehovah Adad Anisi. Uh -huh. Jehovah Shalom, uh -huh. peace with us. Amen. We call him Jehovah our powerful God. All the Jehovah's that we call God, uh -huh. we ought to call it like we believe it. Uh -huh. I don't care where you are this very hour, this very minute. As long as you look at your problem bigger than your Savior. There will always be problems in your life. Amen. But when you got the power of faith and you speak existence into your dead situation, the Bible says in Romans 4 and verse number 17 that when we speak the things that are not as though they were, uh -huh. God will, God has, and God can make them happen. Am I right yeah, about yeah. it? The problem is, uh, is that we got to start speaking about stuff that's not as if it is. Uh, As a matter of fact, I already claimed my victory in the right of God. I already preached a 5,000 member church. I've already preached a victory over education. I've already preached a victory over my financial situation. I already preached a love over hate. I've already spoken over my enemies that I shall be victorious. And as long as you speak in faith according to the will of God, it has to happen because God put power in our words. Amen. Amen. And if you don't get this, you miss this the best as you had this month. Because this lesson suggests to you that you can speak to you. How many of you having some trials right now? You may have some problems. How many of you have some problems? I just want three, I just need three people to stand up and speak against their problem right now. I want to speak, I speak, I'm, I'm speaking joy over my problem. Just, I need three people. See, 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 that's, that's way to find out where you are. I need, I'm talking to these people that speak the same way. I'm talking faith people. I'm, go ahead, brother, but, 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 Spencer, go ahead. Speaking joy. He said, I speak joy over, over his problem. Amen. Right. I beat them. He expected peace in the home. He's speaking peace in his house. Amen. Speaking victory over sorrow. Victory Amen. over sorrow. Amen. Amen. I'm speaking to conquer over, con uh, over controversy. Conquer, yeah. conquer over controversy. Uh -huh. Ain't that all right, church? Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. Of, some, some of you need to start speaking against your problem. Why is it, Lord, that they can't understand your speech? Because you have to speak faith. Right. And you don't speak faith, then you won't speak faith. Uh -huh. When they spoke, they spoke out of faith. And when they spoke, it then gave them faith. And once they got favor, you can rest assured they will receive the destiny, the things that God held for them. And until you start talking like you got faith in God, you miss your power. And when you miss your power, you miss the force of God. And when you miss the force of God, you miss the favor of God. I'm Amen. encouraging each and every one of you. Stop letting folk talk for you. Stop letting folk tell you what you're going to do spirits and not going right. to do. You need to start speaking against folk. Everything that rises head up against unity. Everything that rises head up against peace. Everything that rises his head against conquering. Everything that rises head against financial. All you need right. to speak against it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. When the devil approached Jesus in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus did not whip out a magic wand to make the devil go away, but he spoke against the devil. He All said, right. I rebuke you. Am I right about it? Right. Get me behind me, Satan. Right. I rebuke you. Why you rebuke you? You have to speak against the wiles of the enemy. Yeah. Somebody ought to be yeah. here right now. Yeah. Ready to give God glory uh -huh. and speak about a good week. Yeah. 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 Bible says, we come to a conclusion. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to be used for the edifying. 
we, may ch we must change the way we talk about our circumstances, the way we speak about the spiritual realm, the way we see ourselves. Somebody's taught you that you can't be all you can be. Somebody's taught you that the enemy has a better plan. Some of us are already speaking what we want to do as soon as we get out this place. And God is nowhere either. We need to speak things that edify the kingdom of God. We're right out this building, we're about to tell folk that I was in church and I learned to speak how good church was. Right. Amen. And not only how good it was, how good it's going to be if it's the Lord's will if we meet again. Uh -huh. If you want a better husband, a better wife, you better start speaking about a better husband or a better wife. Uh -huh. If you keep speaking negative about your wife, you can have a full grown monster up in there. And it's nobody's fault but yours because you spoke up in existence. Am I right about it? You call her a Tyrannosaurus Rex, she gonna breathe fire on you and bite your head off. And you made her. Am I right about it? If you want better friends, you better start speaking good friends in your life. If you want friends that's got something, you better start speaking friends that's got something in your life. As long as you keep on speaking broke folk in your life, broke Negroes gonna be walking around you and you call them out of the brokenness of their habitat. Y'all ought to say amen. If you want a fine woman, speak a fine woman. We used to say we were little. I want, I want my woman fine as a dime. Am I right about it? Right, right, right. I, 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 I said, I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. I don't want no mediocre. He's speaking against mediocre. Right. Am I right about it? Right. You got to speak what you want. Amen. Oh, I wish I had some folks full of Holy Spirit up in this house today. Amen. Oh, God has said in his word, Isaiah 54 through 5, the Lord has given me a tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in due season to him that is weary. He winketh my, he winketh Mine ear to hear as to learn. The Lord God hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned I back. I'm saying when you leave here today, don't leave here turning your back on this message. Right. Something go wrong in your life Monday morning, speak against it. Right. Somebody backstab you, speak that God bless them. They don't have to act like that. Amen. If somebody don't do what they're supposed to do, forgive them in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you want something powerful to happen, don't just sit around crying talking about it. You pick a date on your calendar, Tuesday at 3 o'clock, God going to do this and this at that time in the name of Jesus. And right. watch God surprise you. Watch God move in your life. Right. But when you ask something to God, you got to ask in faith. If you want her back, I know God done showed you she ain't no good for you. Ask for her back. Say, Lord, send that devil back to me right. on Friday at 3 o'clock so we can be back together again. And she can take my money. And she can take my jewelry. And she can me up that night and give it to both and women. Just ask her to come on back. Tell her, come on back. But we are sort of speaking. And when you speak it, don't be general. Give a date and a time and an instant when you expect God to move in your life. All and right. God can do anything but fail. But you got to start talking like you serve a living God. Yeah. I speak yeah. in the name of Jesus. Every devil, every foul spirit in here, get out of here and find somewhere else to go. Spawn their worms of negativity. I speak against every spirit that won't support this work. That will find somewhere else to go leech off of and drain the re spiritual resources of that pastor, whoever he might be and that God be with him I speak a word in a due season that God will bless us with folk who come in here with the spirit of God ready to praise God with everything they got with all their heart and all their might and all their soul I speak a word right now that God will declare we will bless those who are striving to reach him with the help their strength with blessing I declare it